Plenty of mental and emotional challenges faced by everyone. Today, on the Bomberos on Fire podcast, we delve deep into the heart of this issue. My name is Armando, and today we're shedding light on a topic that's close to our heart, mental health. Not just in the firefighting community, but also to everyone else because everyone has a bone in this fight. It's a conversation that long overdue. We'll be discussing the unique challenge we face, sharing personal stories, and exploring ways to improve our mental well-being. With insights from experts, personal testimony, and actionable strategies, we aim to ignite a conversation that can make a difference. Because just as we fight fires, take care of people, and work in a stressful environment, we must also combat the internal struggles that many of us face. This is not just for firefighters, but everyone else living on this planet. Together, we can build a community of support, understanding, and healing. Join us as we journey through the art of conversation, seeking light and hope for everyone. Be safe. Welcome. Welcome back, uh, my people from Bomberos on Fire. Uh, my name is Armando. I'm today with a really special guest. It's out of my realm of knowledge and, I guess, expertise. <laughs> I know about a lot of things, but not about this that much. And uh, I want to say thank you to everybody who listened from, to us from South America, United States, Spain, Portugal, and I got people in Morocco and uh, well, yes, I got people in Morocco, I got people in Italy, and Poland. I got people in Poland because so recently yeah, I was yeah. in Poland, and I'm going back to Poland in March. And I'm here with one of experts. Uh, uh, she's probably you around the world, basically, right? You, I've seen you all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> That's very kind of you. Yes, I'm, I'm, I work anywhere where I can have internet connection, and anywhere I am, I, I can I can work. <laughs> It's yes, wonderful. and uh, today will be interesting, really interesting for a, a lot of people, and, and I'm actually excited, really excited to talk to you about a bunch of things, but let's first introduce yourself, who are you, what do you do, and uh, we go from there. Absolutely, well, thank you so much, Armando. It is a real special treat to be included on a podcast that really covers the importance in wellness and taking care of ourselves. and. Before I introduce myself even further, I just want to mention how important it is that those who are in roles where there is chronic stress and exposure to uh, traumatic situations, how important it is for them to seek support and to rally together to do so. And so with that being said, my name is Andrea Zobor, and I am a holistic sex and intimacy coach based in Miami, Florida. I support and guide singles, couples, and all relationship dynamic styles into their pleasure medicine through embodiment. So we cover the mental resilience component as yeah. one of my five uh, sacred bodies in my full program. But we also talk about the spiritual body, the physical body, the emotional body, and the sexual body. So we're, we're looking at everything from a holistic uh, lens. And that allows us to exponentially elevate and heighten our healing potential. And, and so, yes, well said, because uh, you said it perfectly. I think uh, the reason why I, I contact you, because it's so important to talk about this about because people think about sex is just porn and uh, a routine nine to five a night whoever is your partner it doesn't matter so i don't think people have the view and including myself too sometimes that it's also important to have a healthy sex life or at least know your body so you can know somebody else and oh. and Mm -hmm. right so it and, and sex to me or, or making those connections is something like related to anybody in the world in the world anybody human beings are made to be with in a community with somebody not by themselves absolutely wow i mean incredible you you should you should teach some tantra too maybe Armando. <laughs> <laughs> i should shit I'll take, I'll take it <laughs> i i love you mentioned so many powerful and important pieces. I mean, first and foremost, 
that sexuality isn't just about penetration and achieving the goal of uh, orgasm. And in our society right now, we are we are learning and experiencing the limits of only having sex from a physical level. We are desiring more connection. We are desiring more intimacy. And those who come to me and who reach out to me always have some kind of predisposed idea of what Tantra is. And I tend to jump in and help them completely myth bust what they've heard about Tantra. So maybe you've heard things, you know, with your friends. Oh my God. Or maybe you've read things on the internet that are crazy and wild. And you have no and idea. Sing is such a powerful voice for tantric sex and his weekend long sex marathons. You know, that's really exciting and delightful. And we, we all want that to some capacity. Absolutely. Like, why yeah. not? But Tantra is 90% spiritual connection to the divine and 10% sexuality itself mm. and the act of sex i like to put the the metaphor of if we have a stool that we're sitting on and the stool has four legs if each leg is a different height and is made out of a different material oh. one is made out of foam one is made out of steel but yeah. the steel one is short and the foam one is is it, you know all different material sizes etc if you try and sit on the stool and trying to sit on the stool is the equivalent of accessing heightened ecstatic blissful states of pleasure you're you can't sit on it you're going to fall right over like that that it's not a usable stool and where people often tend to veer when initiating their all right i want to improve my sexuality how let me read all the books about all the positions and let me get the kama sutra and let's get let's get all the <laughs> let's get all the positions True. and techniques all memorized but they don't forget that, that they do forget that that is the least important element that's that's all you can add so much novelty to your sexual experiences, but the quality of your sexual experiences and your relationships and your connection to the divine start from your relationship to your body, your relationship to your home, to your family, your friends, your work, to the voice and the conversation, the, 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 inner, the inner protector that we have mentally the emotional state of our being our heart our access to our heart and then the ability to really lean in trust and have faith in consistent and scientifically proven spiritual practices that helps it, it is true it is true and regardless what do you believe in my opinion doesn't matter which religion you need to have that component in your life right you cannot be just you need to have something because uh right now everyone wants to have sex and, and it's great but you need connections to actually be meaningful right it's to actually enjoy it i guess more you can have one position and that's fine but if you have a really good connection it doesn't matter if you only have one or ten thousand positions you is great. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I can't, I'll speak from my own personal experience here, but I can't tell you how many times, you know, there's plenty of, of low grade individuals to just access for any kind of sexual exploration you want to do. There's, it, sure. there's anyone and everyone. If you need someone to help you with a certain type of kink, if you want to have a certain kind of uh, position experience, you can broadcast that on, on dating sites and find someone yeah. within the day to help you yes, with that. Yes, true. It's true. But the connections that I've had like that are so superficial and are are so deeply unsatisfying that I thought to myself because that was that was the education I received you know I received education from porn 
I received yeah. education from abstinence-based sexual education in uh, my high school in Texas, where I grew up. Oh, Jesus. And so I just, I thought to myself, when I started having sex and, when, and, and even before then, self-pleasuring, there's more of a spiritual connection to this than what's being shared, than what is normalized. I'm going to dig into this. And lo and behold, the more that I cultivated my own spiritual connection, the better the sex got. And, it, you know, whether it's like it's something as simple as missionary, it, I, I've gone into transcendental, multidimensional spaces, having sex and, and not even having sex. That's the crazy thing. Tantra wow. is, is not just about physical penetration of the bodies it's about an energetic exchange sex sex is a sacred energetic exchange oh that's so actually pretty smart about it that way yeah that's yeah. actually pretty smart <laughs> <laughs> yeah holy shit yeah I i'm learning too i'm learning too trust me i'm fucking learning that is awesome i didn't thought about that in that way to be honest. And I'm pretty sure, like I told you before, I work in a field that is uh, high stress uh, and it's a bunch of dudes, the majority, let's be honest, firefighters, police, uh, military. And uh, it's hard for us to open to anybody outside our community or our family. So uh, I'm, like I said, I'm glad I'm doing this with you. So hopefully somebody from anywhere can listen to this and realize, hey, maybe I can talk to my partner about it. You don't have to go in the fire station and talk. It's, oh my God, they will give you some shit, but they, uh, it will help you even internally. It will help you a lot to, to open. I think uh, a lot of people are so suppressed on, on, on this subject that uh, they are depressed and they are uh, in a bad mood. And, and I think you are helping to release that and help with our mental health because sometimes all you need is a really good session <laughs> to put it that way <laughs> just to release that stress absolutely yeah i mean what you're speaking to and and i i'm not in that industry but i can only i mean i've i've, I've done so many meditations and I've, I've met with so many clients who have such high stress jobs i, and bet. I actually also dated uh an ex-army vet and the the reality is there isn't enough tool there's no emotional tools when it comes to how to navigate these really intense situations and we store everything in our body and so when we want to access pleasure or when we want a release, one of the quickest ways or many, many of the quick ways to do so are um, through substances, uh, yeah. drugs, uh, yeah. sex. It's, it's so easy to ignore it. And the problem that we're trying to avoid, the part of us that we're avoiding and, and, and turning a blind eye to is the area that we need that the medicine that the medicine exists so with every single individual who is coming from a place of burnout or even lack of community support knowing that tantra exists and i may not be the the, the practitioner for everyone yes, tantra, true. spiritual healing modalities are here and available to us. Everything that you ever wanted to uh, know about guided meditation is on YouTube. Um, Ayurvedic practices, uh, quantum physics. I mean, it's all here for you. But when you're already at a state of overwhelm and overload and the tools that you know of or that you were equipped with, which in reality, most of us don't have any yeah. at all. When you're at that point, the guidance of being supported through the process is like the most ultimate easeful hand and leaning support system that you could possibly have. Whether it's, you know, you are not working currently, maybe you're unemployed and you are looking to work on your self-development. Or let's say you are a CEO 
trying to pack in more time for connection and you just don't know how to do it with the most efficient uh, methods, that's where I come in. That's where coaches like me come in to really understand what your specific needs, desires, fears, and curiosities are. Who are you as a human? How can we oh, wow. holistically treat and heal the wounds that are causing so much suffering in all areas of our lives. That's that's awesome. And uh, I will put your connect your contact if anybody wants to contact you uh, on the description. I'm pretty sure, especially on this week is Valentine's Day, so you hey. are perfect for this occasion. I got a I got a, I got a question, and it's curious about me. What is the difference between a sex coach and a life coach? Obviously, sex coach more more into the sex part, I guess. But I don't know. I'm just asking you because uh, you give me that head, you give me that look. That means uh, somebody asked you before that. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. So, with my title, I'm a holistic yeah. sex and intimacy coach, which is a long way of saying I am a niche version of life coaching, a super okay. refined niche uh, branch of life coaching. And where life coaching is based on general patterns, behaviors, uh, how to up level in general, you know, the, the, the physical, the tangible and the internal uh, mental and emotional states of a human, of the, of the, of the, of the client. The sex coach component comes in where we access more of the spirituality, where we access oh, okay. the sexual body. Not all life coaches have the extensive training, the certifications, or the you know trauma informed uh, background to be able to hold clients in something as delicate, as sensitive, and as as vulnerable, and as yeah. you know, completely heart opening, uh, uh, sex opening as a, a sexuality. Like the, it's it's not something that everyone's trained in, and to have someone who not only has practiced tantra for nearly a decade, not only you know um, has also taken retreats, training, seminars, and worked with really powerful mentors in the industry but also sees clients regularly for everything from sexual performance to body confidence to um repairing a marriage that lacks eroticism uh yeah. or or someone who has never experienced sex before and wants to, wow. but in a meaningful way, and and is choosing to save their experiences for the most ecstatic, the highest quality. Like it, it's wow. it's a very it's it's so niche that you can certainly reach out to a life coach, and you can certainly reach out to uh, a talk therapist as well. But my specialty is is the foundation of tantra where we go into the body we go into the muscles the nervous system oh oh my gosh talking about this gets me so excited uh <laughs> we, we we get into the body to treat and to nourish and ultimately by healing it we just set ourselves back on the route it's i don't even i don't even teach advanced practices in the initial stages and i have clients coming to me like everything's changing every my family like family life my work life like my money is changing and then once we get to the component of sexuality and our sexual body it's like it's just a symphony it's a musical symphony i <laughs> i i spoke about what i do with the girlfriend the other day and in short, Tantra leads people to live an orgasmic life. And yeah. each person can decide how orgasmic they want to live. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's actually pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good, actually. I I never expect that. Uh, yeah, because I never knew the, the difference. And I'm now I got it clear. <laughs> Trust me. And it's, it's good that you... The specialization that you have is is uh, so, like you said, niche and unique that that 
it helped this foundation of human beings, right? Uh, basically, because we all run, yeah, we all think we have a, a like a like a clear mind, especially people who works in like a CEOs and a rational mind. But we all based on feelings too. We all have feelings, regardless if you say or no, yes or no. We all have feelings. Mm-hmm. Emotions are energy in motion. Okay. And when we're stuck in thought. That also means we're likely stuck somewhere else in the body. We're stuck in our feeling. And so when when our society of super cerebral beings, I mean, almost every man I speak with that I meet or, you know, in the dating world, tell me, wow, like how I'm I'm, I'm such a, I think so much, like I, I, I overthink or that's my safety. I stay in the safety of my mental body. And once they get into their their physical body it's like discovering a whole new world that never existed yeah. that they didn't know existed it's it's magic <laughs> and the reason why i think it's it's it, this is important to mention in that women are more likely to pursue spiritual and energetic healing modalities than men sure. Because women are more heart centered, are and, and naturally more intuitive and 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 feeling based uh, being. That being said, men can reach those heights, but in the world that we currently live in, men are not encouraged to speak no. their their feelings, to to be vulnerable, to be honest, and to be seen and received, loved, appreciated, adored, and, and devoted to for, for their connection to their heart. It's like, what, what can you provide? And um, how quickly or how well can you get this thing done? That's the yeah. world that we live in. It's not, how are it's you? True. Like, what do you need? How can I support you to do that? And, it's true. and with this, like, with this field, the brotherhood needs to be supporting one another. So right back at you here with a thank you for creating this and, and making this podcast and this, this, I know. Uh, this happened. It's happening. It's happening. Hopefully we got a second part and a third part and a fourth part. Who knows? Uh, it took, t- took us a little bit to get here, but we got it. We got it. Finally. I, I, I love to chat. I, I can't help it. I get so oh, that's passionate. That's fine. I love so it. Please. I know. I love Next it. Hey, that, that's Pocket is the best vehicle for this. I, I love it. Just keep talking. Trust me. I, I'm learning too. I'm I'm just like a, a brand new person just learning your knowledge and sharing this knowledge to everybody. Because you know, you you have to. I think it's so much so important to to talk about this, regardless what you think about it. But it's important to talk about it, and and people don't do it. And I think also it's about a culture, at least the men on the Western side, how we are raised, especially knowing that you have some spanish roots that's that's even worse like <laughs> talking about hard men that don't want to talk about anything is is our spanish culture yeah so yeah so i got a question do you have a lot of male clients or female clients or or a mix just because you mentioned that the women are more prone to to get that help or to be in touch with that side of the of the human being yeah, absolutely. Great question. So when it comes to my one-on-one coaching program, I get a, a really equal mix of oh. uh, couples and singles from all different genders and identities. And in my workshops as well, it's it's really beautiful seeing how at least how this work is being received in Miami and around the States is, is attracting every age demographic, every uh, religious background, every, um, you know, stage of life. It's for everybody who, with one stipulation, who is ready to, Uh. who is already ready to take a look honestly at what they're doing, the role that they play in hindering their orgasmic living. Okay. It requires a level of 
of of honesty, of okay. self awareness, and a, a devotion to the practice beyond. I just want to have heightened sex. That's wonderful, and that's great. There are there are practitioners for you to te- get you straight there. But that's not sustainable in my eyes and how I've seen clients oh, transition yeah. through different programs and, and learn about sexuality. This is, this is a, a lifelong commitment and path towards connection with divinity. I mean, we all came here into this life through sex. We came here through yeah. life force energy, uh, chi, prana. For those of, those of you who practice uh, different kinds of um, of belief systems those words may be familiar to you like in yoga we have prana and it's the same thing we're all referencing the same thing universe energy life force energy and if we can tap into it properly everything just gets so much sweeter and juicier and so much more delicious (laughs) oh i bet (laughs) i bet it does yeah once you open that door it's a it's a whole new world you have to explore and I think you're right to to get to take your classes or anybody. You need to be willing, honestly, to be open to that knowledge. Because if not, you get a freaking perv. Let's be honest. Because <laughs> you take advantage of that. And I bet you have a lot of those knocking your door to see what can I do in your class or whatever. But yeah, it makes totally sense that you you have to be actually honest, open to do this. And take, it takes it takes a big step to do it, to be honest with yourself. Say, hey, I, I'm lacking something or I want something. It mm-hmm. takes a lot to take that step. But once you take it, I'm guessing it's just enlightenment. See the world a different way. Yeah. it's it's. I, I mean, if I were an enlightened being, I don't think I would be here right now. Part of, part of being human is about relearning everything and seeing the, yeah. the subtleties of divinity in my chaotically wild and messy life that's what we're all here we're here to remember what we're capable of and here to we're here to experience pleasure what else would we have sensations for i mean it keeps us safe our 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 five senses keep us safe but we're here to enjoy life if we weren't if we weren't here to enjoy life we wouldn't feel so much joy when you know, eating our favorite meal or yeah. being hugged by our, our loved one. That's, that's what we're here to do. The universe is conspiring in our favor to bring us the depth of pleasure that created all of this. And um, wow, I, I can go off on a tangent on that one too. So I'm just going to hold back for just No, a no, don't hold back. No, don't hold back. It's actually, it's pretty interesting. I'm, I'm listening. I'm wide open listening. Don't hold back, girl. Just just go wild. Fuck. Just keep going. I love it. This is awesome. This this is really awesome. <laughs> Able to hear somebody. It's true because I don't I don't hear this quite often. I don't in my world, which is first responder world, the majority, I don't I don't hear this. I don't. We we should focus on at least in our case, taking care of the patient. Taking care of the situation could be putting a fire down, could be rescue somebody, could be helping somebody with a stroke, heart attack, uh, and uh, we just focus on them. But we don't focus on ourselves. And one of the reasons why I created this podcast uh, almost a year ago, which is I'm very proud of it, uh, is because in Central Florida there were four suicide from the fire service, and I knew I knew two of the guys kind of. And uh, my mom is a, uh, is a, uh, I call it, it's a coach, it's a couples coach. And she told me, hey, why don't you talk about it? Because you seem like you stress about it. Oh, wait, shit, why not? We all have PTSD. We all have some problems. We all have anxiety, depression. Why not use this as a tool for everybody uh, just to at least talk about it? You don't have to do your practice. You don't have to do my practice, but at least you talk about it. And that's how I started. Talking to firefighters and talking to anybody. So, and I'm and I'm happy that I'm now in this level. I'm talking to you. That's awesome. I'm I'm so excited and happy about it. It's it's great. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you also had a really uh, powerful parent figure in your in your world. That yeah, I do. I'm lucky. I'm lucky that I do have that. Uh, my parents uh, 
yeah, there, we're, nobody's perfect, but uh, I was lucky that I got a, a parents that had helped me and guide me through a lot of things that happened in my life because uh, nobody's life is perfect. Uh, like I said, I used to work in an emergency system in Venezuela on the streets wow. of Caracas. Wow. So I know what is to deal Ooh. with stress. And now I came here to America 16, 15 years ago, and I work in Central Florida as a paramedic. And I'm still working actually on Disney area. So if you want to go to this, well, if you want to come to Disney and you come to Disney, you can visit the fire station. No, trust me, the, the guys will open the door for you. <laughs> the station is yours. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I would, I would love, I would love to take up that offer and I would love to teach a little tantric regulation. Yes, this. I can, I can, because I'm getting into the peer support team. Hopefully I get in and uh, well, by this time in February, I will get an answer. If that happened, I can say, hey, I got somebody who can teach us some of the techniques. And I'm pretty sure somebody will say, yes, bring it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, yes, yes I, I will make that happen. If, if I'm getting to that and everything goes well, I, I will definitely bring you to, the, to this. And maybe you can open your little niche with uh, first responders. Why not? Oh, we, are my we, are, we are a tough crowd. Let me tell you, we're a tough crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Our sense of humor is a little bit darker than uh, normal, so I hope you're ready for that. <laughs> I'll bring, um, I'll bring all of my best practices and all of my best tools. And oh yeah, know, it will embrace you. <laughs> it'll, be, I, it'll be fun. The and you speak to something that's that's actually really important. The the people who who need this the most are sometimes the most repelled to it. They're like, absolutely yeah. not. I don't want to do that. I don't want, what spirit, da, da, da. I'm, I'm closed minded. It's, it's That's not logical. I, where's, the, where's the science? Da, 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 da. It's an over-reliance on the logic, the <sighs> tantra cannot be experienced or fully expressed solely through thought it is a feeling based practice it is going inward it is not you know knowing facts or knowing statistics it is a unique experience for every individual and a tantric session of coaching could be anything from having an emotional an emotional release session where we we specifically hold a, a wound that is is inflamed that is that is sore that is you know crying for help and we allow spaciousness and, and nourishment into that or it can be where we are exploring options for you know what what tools can we incorporate in in that specific client's world in their sex life or their in, re in their relationship life communication tools even that yeah. will enhance their connection it's it's so many things it is true it's not just the touching or i guess the breathing is communication too that's that's uh, 90% yeah. of the problems mm -hmm. in the world is communication to be honest Mm. And <laughs> so much if we're not embodied, we can't. Our, our our mind is cut off from the intelligence in our system from the neck down. Yeah. We we don't know what it's like to make a cohesive, holistic decision. We just think: Is this logical? Yes or no? Do I have the facts? You know, yeah. is, the, is the science backing this up? That's not always tantra. Sometimes it is a completely intuitive experience. And when we're talking about disconnection and, 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 and depression, loneliness, um, these, these huge, these huge, I, I feel into it as we're talking about it. I just, I feel I my sink and oh, the heaviness that 
this desire as a healer to really bring the medicine out of others. Ah, so when we speak about these specific things that are, you know, causing us so much pain and suffering, and we seek external re remedies, it, it's not going to be long lasting and it's not going to be sustainable. And it's as simple as helping people really access their own magic. As, as yeah. weird as that sounds, as, as taboo as that may, you know, hippy dippy sure. as that may sound, Tantra, <laughs> is, Tantra is accessing magic again. Is true. the weaving of what is tangible and the spiritual, intangible. Yeah, that's, yeah, sounds, yeah, you got the magic for sure. I can see that. And I, I see the passion that you have for this. And, and, and it's awesome. It's awesome to see people with that passion going and, and trying to make it, regardless what it is. It's, it's awesome to see somebody with passion. And, and I'm happy for it. Um, I'm just thinking right now, the way we can uh, uh, put into the fire service is more about the communication side and about the 90% with Tantra than actually the sexual part. That's the way you, you can actually, we yeah. can actually make it happen. And, and yeah, I will, I, will, I will talk about it to see what they, they think about this, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, absolutely. We can, we can do something. Collaboration, I guess. You, Why you know, not? I have, a, I have a crazy idea. Why don't we actually yeah. do a very short tantric practice right now? It'll take us three minutes. Sure. Oh. I'm down for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you're listening to this and you're operating a moving vehicle or any heavy equipment or machinery, please come back to this. Do this when you are stationary in a safe space. <laughs> All um, right. You do not want anyone getting hurt. <laughs> So what we're going to do is we're going to learn the three tantric pillars of pleasure. This is, this is the basis of anything that is tantra. Tantra is breath, sound, and movement. First, okay. breath. Breath can either extend our lives or shorten it. We can yeah. experience the depth of our lungs. We can exhale and inhale with pleasure. We can, we can sound with our breath. That's how we can express ourselves without air. Nothing's going to escape our lips. So yeah. the second is sound and sound is directly correlated to our sex center, our genitals. And in our reproductive um, stage of development, we are actually very intimately connected. I mean, Google it, check out my website. I go into detail about this, but the tissues of the body are intimately connected and directly connected until we separate and we continue forming into the human being that we are. So it's our ability to vocalize and express is connected to our ability to receive and access our, uh, our sex center. So if, moaning in bed is uncomfortable or feels strange to you that's an area to explore that's what's what's blocking me in my throat that's possibly keeping me from experiencing more pleasure or if i don't know how to express boundaries if i don't know how to tell someone thank you for the offer for the hug but no if we don't know how to use our boundaries and our voice to keep it to, with love for others and ourselves. We are also disconnected from our sex center. It's, 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 it's so integral. So breath, sound, and then last but not least, movement. Whether, you know, we're, we're sitting in meditation, stillness is still movement. It's a, it's a form of movement. Stillness yeah. needs kinetic energy to balance. So. If we're still and we're not moving our bodies and we're not, let's say, even practicing self-pleasure or uh, spiritual connection with our body, how can we then jump into connection with others, expecting them to know what to do with us or to elevate it with us? So it, exactly. movement is essential for, for moving energy. So with these three pillars of pleasure, I'm going to just invite you 
to close your eyes and keep your spine as straight as possible. And I want you to notice in this moment your breath without changing it. Hmm. Are you breathing softly, shallow? Are you breathing deeply? Is there a, a speed to which your breath is going? Is there a heat maybe or a coolness to your breath? So as you breathe, taking a nice inhale, it really fills the lungs through the diaphragm. Holding it for a second and releasing. Notice just from one breath how much calmer and more at peace your body and your system feels. So let's try again. Sometimes it's, it's not just the first breath that we get it on. We have want to keep it consistent. But as you listen to me, keep breathing. Notice your toes. Notice if you are touching the ground with your bare feet. Notice if your feet are sore. Do they Oh, do they ache from the long day of work? Mm-hmm. Are they a little bit antsy? Like, oh, this is a new practice and I'm a little nervous and I can feel that energy in my feet. Just notice it all. Subtleties in sensation. <sighs> Breath, sound. You're going to inhale. And exhale, a light sigh, a moan, a groan, whatever feels good to your body. Give it a try. See what comes up. Notice how we just sang, even at a micro level, even deeper into our body. Let's do three more breaths together. Sigh on the exhale. Noticing our fingertips now. Coolness in the air. Maybe it's windy where you are. Inhale. And on this exhale, really release everything. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Slowly return to your breath. Relaxed. <laughs> yeah. And you you just did Tantra. <laughs> you just Tantra. Just Tantra. It's, wow. It can yeah. Be a I... practice or a three hour practice. And it can be as advanced and complex as you desire it, but the myth of it all is that we are not already tantric beings. We are all tantric beings because we all sip on our favorite cup of coffee or tea in the morning and yeah. really enjoy the flavor and the essence of it. We savor the hugs that we get, the moments of, oh my gosh, what was that delicious smell? I'm just going to soak that in. That presence, that intentionality. That's Tantra. That's awesome. And thank you so much. I got a free session. That's a great way. Everybody who's listening or viewing this, who will will this and YouTube, whatever, it will they this is a sample, guys, of what she can do for you, how she can help you. Three minutes. You can say you can do this for three hours more than that? Yeah. That's insane. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is insane. Because I'm I'm not used to it. My my way to relax is literally working out with heavy weights. <laughs> that's my way to relax. And that's yes. great to pair with the practice of stillness in a way that is subtle. Uh, a stillness that is also soft. 
Yes. There's and there's there's the you know moving energy that can be really rigorous, like what you're talking about, that that really does you know get the chemicals moving in our body and helps us ah, release. But also, we can't just be doing that all the time. Yeah, it's true. We have I'll to give it to you. <laughs> I'll give it to you that it's not all the time. I, you're hundred percent right. So I'm glad that I was able to talk to you today and have this amazing little micro session of tantric uh, coaching. And it's great. I, I, I might take your word and actually to call you for our session and stuff like that because it's actually yeah. good. <laughs> I No, really, you really changed the perception that I got about this. Because yes, all I'm thinking before it. I came to the podcast and before I, all this, like, it's all about sex, like big old orgy. That's what, that's what I'm thinking. And it's not about that. It's more about uh, healing yourself and have another tool for those people that are going through a process or going through a rough moment. This is a great way to just just relax mm-hmm. and, and just reset and, and move forward. This is, this is awesome. I, I thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. For Thank this. you, Armando. Oh my goodness. Yes. Absolutely. I love it. Uh, it's been a, I love a, it. And, and pleasure. Absolutely. I have a question. How do you go into this? What what the hell you were thinking? Well, maybe I like tantric, because this shit is a specific. This is a niche that really few people that I, I only know you. That's it. That knows this stuff. Because I'm not in that world. And this is no I, I don't think it's a big world, big bubble, I guess. It's how do you go into this? So, wow. Oh, oh, let's see. Let's Ooh. go. Oh, I touched the button. Oh, shit. I touched <laughs> it. I got you, girl. To keep the story short, I was yes. in college and I was exploring the idea of or the the idea of spirituality for the first time. I okay. grew up without any kind of you know, family uh, practices that were based in religion or spirituality. And I thought college is the perfect time to try and have a taste of a, of a bunch of different things. So let's, let's explore, let's explore this world. And when I Googled, I can't, I can't tell you enough how, how destined my path in Tantra was that the day I Googled, meditation, uh, meditation classes, uh, meditation groups near my university in Texas. Oh, wow. Tantric, Texas. Uh-huh. A, a, and again, this is, a, it's, it's hilarious because in a tantric, on a tantric, or excuse me, on a Texas campus, five minutes away at that specific time in my life, a tantric temple had opened, not five or 10 minutes away from my house. A temple. Yes, a tantric temple. The the equivalent of a tantric studio, for example, where maybe okay. someone who wants to experience yoga would go to a yoga studio. This is this was a community uh, headquarters for those who practice tantra and who were engaged in conscious and sacred relational uh, practices. And they were hosting a weekend retreat, essentially, where, where it included meditation, yoga, delicious, nourishing food. And I thought to myself, being the, 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 the go-getter and the spontaneous adventurer I am, why not? Let's go yeah, for it. Not? Let's see. Exactly. And I landed, in a, I landed in a community that was so authentic. And so real and so, so, so wholesome that I'd never experienced before at that point in my life, period. I'd never experienced that with my own friend groups, with my own parents. It was, it was such a eye-opening realization that this existed and recognition that this is what I've been looking for. There was, I couldn't play it, put a name to it or or say, I'm looking for Tantra, I need Tantra in my life. But when I had it right in front of me and I could feel it in my body and I didn't overthink it, it was right there. And I, I just knew. Yeah. 
So from there on, I I was basically there daily in different kinds of intimacy practices and contact improv and um, group ceremonies and rituals that were all about connecting to the divine. And I eventually took my practice into my own daily life, incorporating it daily. And there came a point in my in my career where paying bills or making making money just to pay bills wasn't cutting it. I wanted. Yeah. I wanted passion. I wanted purpose. I wanted impact. And I, I became the, the contact for all of my network at the time to talk about sexuality and relationships. I would get phone calls from people I hadn't you know, heard, heard from in a year or two years saying, hey, how's it going? I, I feel like I can talk to you, but I can't talk to anyone else about this. And I know you're going to have great advice. Can I give you a call? And it, it just, it was such a natural evolution that I leaped into it. And it has been so gratifying to witness other people realize their power and to, to have the relationships that they want, the relationship to themselves that they've been craving yeah. for since, since childhood, to reparent themselves, to, and to eat meals in a way that bring so much pleasure and delight that they can't tell the difference between eating breakfast and having sex. That, that's the, that's, that's the personally what I wish if I, if I could, if I could make a wish for the entire world, it would be <laughs> to be on a tantric level where we're all living orgasmically. So that's, that's, that's how I got into it. And that's where I am here or that's what's brought me here now and I'm continuing to learn about myself too. I'm no master. I am yeah. I am a specifically niche practitioner. And yeah. there are so many people who just need a subtle redirection into their embodiment that will change everything. Yeah. Everything. That's true. It's true. And the moment that you know everything, the moment you you need to quit. That's my philosophy in life. The moment I say I know everything, I need to move on. Because it's, no, you don't know everything in life. I mean, because everything is changing. Everything is evolving. And, and, and yeah, everything is dynamic, the way I say it all the time. Wow, that's awesome. That is, <laughs> that is really good. And uh, I got another question. I got a lot of questions for you. But uh, yeah. since you live, we live in Florida, and yeah. you live in Miami, which is literally North Cuba, do yeah. you also do you also teach classes or do seminaries in Spanish for those Spanish speakers that live in Florida? They might be interested in talking to you because you know our culture, our people, they're not too open for this. Absolutely. We are horny, but we are not open for the other part. <laughs> so <laughs> So do you offer to Spanish speakers at least? Uh classes no. or whatever? So I'm going to be very upfront and honest. My I grew up in Caracas. I, I no, I was born in Caracas, but I grew up in the states. So wait, wait, I, wait! No yeah. shit. Yeah. You Venezuelan? I am Venezuelan. Yeah. That's just like me. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't I came here when I was two. So oh. my parents re reinforced learning English over Spanish, and so oh. I I can speak to a conversational level of Spanish. Puedo hablar en español. But no but I'm tantric. not so fluent that I can that I feel like I can do, you know, big workshops or seminars, but I can work with people individually. Okay, it makes sense. In in a one on one container, I can do that because there is more capacity and space for me to uh, for my brain to wake up around certain words and phrases yes. and, and, and I can connect so much easier that way, but I'm not yet there. We're, we're at the level where I can do fully Spanish. Uh, you will trust me. You will in time speak. I speak so much Spanish here in Miami now that oh, yeah. it's, it's the best it's ever been. And I know it'll only get better. Yeah. You'll be better. Or uh, do like it happened to me when I went to Poland to teach, uh, some classes, I got a translator next to me, so I have to speak three sentences. The guy translated in Polish and back in English. Okay, we may yeah. we may have to co-create and make something happen, Armando. <laughs> I lost a lot of the flow because I had to stop, wait for the guy to translate, 
and back again. Mm. But it, it was an amazing experience just to uh, say stuff, teach stuff to people that never knew about saving another fireman in, in danger. That's, <sighs> that's what I teach, basically. It's called mm. RIT. And uh, uh, yeah, I got plans to go to Chile, Ecuador, all those places, hopefully, eventually. Yeah, but um, yeah, that was an experience that uh, that was really open mind. Like, oh, wow, I don't, I need a translator. (laughs) As a translator, yeah, that was fun. And I also, you've probably seen it, I also have a a business. Because besides the fact that you are an amazing coach, you're also an entrepreneur. Yes. Because you are your own business. Yeah, right? I do. Technically, you mm-hmm. are. You're a businesswoman. Yeah, you're a businesswoman. I mean, we all love this, all this, but you need to pay bills too, eventually. Yeah, absolutely. So um, besides everything I do, I also have a company. I do uh, IV vitamins and minerals. So I go to your house, and if you oh. need vitamins, um, provide that too. And How I started like a month ago. So I'm, I'm getting there. Yeah, I, I know that what is to go through <laughs> the hustle of translation or uh, opening business and all this is uh, it's not easy, but it's fun. But if you need an, a vitamin, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Notes taken. Got it. Got it. <laughs> I feel I'll so send the link. To have been on this podcast and bringing awareness to the fact that we all need support and especially for those in public service roles like firefighters, EMTs and and military, you are so deserving and worthy and the, the life that you desire, the support that you, that you desire is readily available for you. And I look forward to being able to continue the connection in this community, continue building awareness and spreading the word about how Delicious and simple tantra can be. I will trust me. I I will spread that because I think it's a good tool for your toolbox. Whenever you want to use it, whatever you want to do with that, but I think it's a good tool. Even it's just to the meditation part. I actually like that. Just get a minute, just to just calm down. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we got some of the calls like pediatric cardiac arrest, or uh, a lot of people die on your arms. It happened to me many times kids so you, you you need that like uh pause in your life just to just to make sure that you're okay mentally yes and and yes. that's what it that's what i'm trying to do this podcast regardless i'm talking to you i'm glad i'm talking to you today but that's my message just just take it easy and take care of yourself to slow down yes yeah, sometimes you need to slow yeah. down sometimes you have to slow down there's no way you can be 100 percent 100 miles per hour all the time no and no. to slow down and enjoy, like you say, enjoy human beings and enjoy that feeling, that magic that you said. Yes. It's just awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> it's, it's so, so, great. <laughs> <laughs> so, see, we all have an hour and it, it passed actually really fast. Um, what tips you will give? Give me three tips for anybody to help out with this uh, journey. Beginners mm-hmm. or people that are already seeing this stuff. Oh, I touched the button again. <laughs> <laughs> like it. What what three tips would I have? Three tips, because you have a whole Bible of knowledge and tips, but keep oh it three God. simple tips that people can use, especially this week of February in San Valentin on on you know San Valentino. Mm. That you will recommend to to your partner, to your couple, whoever you like. I, I don't care. Whoever you are, it's just what do you will say. Three tips. Okay, beautiful. Three tips. Excellent. Yes. And my computer's about to die, so it's great timing. Exactly. Um, three tips. My first tip is don't assume you know what your partner needs and wants or their fears. Perfect. Have an open conversation with them that is spacious, that is in, a, in an environment where you can have lots of time to go into what do you really enjoy and this includes ourselves to really sit down and have this self-reflective time but what do I desire right now in life what do I desire in all these areas what do I need what am I not getting yeah and what am I possibly afraid of and what scares me 
And if you're going to have a self-love practice, this is my this is my second tip. If you're going to do a self-love practice or celebrate for Valentine's Day with family, friends, a group, your partnership, etc., or with yourself, create a practice that nourishes those needs, those wants, those desires. Don't just buy the teddy bear and the roses and the chocolate because that's what <laughs> is advertised to us. Yeah. Would would your partner or would you rather go to a beautiful flower field and just spend the day exploring and and being in nature like that that's going to mean more than any box of chocolates for the right person and so if we can sure. really listen and hold space for one another's needs desires and fears we can be we can become perfect lovers and caretakers for ourselves and others the third tip <laughs> that I would like to bring up here is we think of Valentine's Day being this one day a year where we really confess and show and express our love to our family, our partners, ourselves. But in Tantra's essence, it's about subtleties. It's about slowing down enough to feel what our rapid mind, cerebral based life cannot comprehend because it's cut off from the rest of our, our, our being. So this Valentine's Day, create a practice for yourself, whether that's enjoying a bath, whether it's taking time over the week this next week to find reasons why you love yourself or why you love your life. It's the subtleties. That's what cultivates yeah. expansive joy and appreciation and access to divinity in the long run. It's not about nice. let's go straight to the most expensive restaurant and get dressed. And those are delightful and delicious things. And if that is in your pleasure and that is a need of yours, then fucking do it. But um, it's fine. For most of us, <laughs> you can You're allowed to curse. Trust me. I'm not censoring anything. I'm not editing anything. This is a great podcast. I love it. <laughs> but for the for the most of us, reaching outward and doing things externally is another way to avoid the inner work. So if we need love, create it. What what does yeah. your soul need? And do something super simple super simple and and give yourself the space and the freedom to just linger in it don't be in a rush especially if you're planning on ha making love over valentine's day and you are um or you are planning a really delicious self-pleasure session how can you turn it up a notch not in intensity necessarily but in presence how can you be presence. more intentional in your practices and in your day-to-day -day life nice now drop the mic love it <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome uh last question before we go um who you recommend from your people that you know you're networking to come to the podcast and talk to me besides you again obviously you're coming back to the podcast i don't care what you say i think how long it takes you coming back to the podcast but uh yeah. who do you recommend to talk to me Oh like, my gosh, the list, the list is so long and I can send you that list right away. And I also sure. want to acknowledge my computer wants to, wants to shut off here in, in approximately, uh, two minutes. So <laughs> I Just want to send me a list. I'm bring Appreciate my it. community. I'm going to bring the people that I know are integrous leaders Sweet. and practitioners into continuing this embodiment work in your world because it's so needed. I, I can't do it all. I can't see every single client who needs me. I have a, exactly. I have a boundaries and capacity too. I can't go over that. So yeah. when it comes yeah. to helping everyone, that's where a group of us can come in. Exactly. So I will leave all your contacts in the description. I appreciate everybody to listen to us. This is a great podcast. I really enjoy it, to be honest. I enjoy the podcast a lot. Yes. Uh, I hope to come back again and do it again. Next time we can do it maybe uh, in person. Oh, how Why not? 
delicious. Yes, while I'm there yes. seeing the firefighters in the station. Let's do yes. it. Yes. Well, I can go down to Miami in the bright train, the new train that they open. So that's Perfect. that's even better. Yeah, you, you come to me. I don't want to do any work. <laughs> <laughs> It's in my plan yeah, so, to come down there. Somebody like to be spoiled. I see that. So, <laughs> so I'm glad you have fun in the podcast. I got a blast in the podcast. Everybody who listened to us in Bomberos on Fire, thank you so much. And I'll see you around. Enjoy your Valentine's Day. <laughs>